Today I'm going to show you how I developed a Bluetooth Low Energy GET client MQTT Gateway along with the GAT server which sends continuously gas sensor data to a broker. I'm using exclusively the ESP32 technology and developing with the SDK that is supplied by Espressif. the development basics. I'm using Ubuntu 16.04 running in Oracle's virtual box on a PC. Additionally, as mentioned before, I'm using the uh, Espressif's SDK. And very importantly, um, relying heavily upon PCB Reflux's GAT server MQTT gateway example. Additionally, the board I'm using is self-designed, uh, incorporating the ASPWROOM, and this board plugs directly into any 5-watt USB wall charger, thus making the uh, devices standalone without uh, any wires tethered to them. The sensors are plugged in to the board uh, separately to provide the analog voltage. Uh, lastly, for development to flash and monitor devices, a USB UART with 3.3 volt output is used. Here is the development board. I show the schematic as well as a picture of the board itself. It's used for both the client and the server. And I'll talk more about this board somewhat near the end of the presentation. The reason for this project is that a typical architecture would have it that the gateway being the central device uh, is also a GET client. And the server is the peripheral device. If you notice that PCB Refluxes uh, project has that the other way around. And so therein lies the reason for this project. Started, the first thing one must do is install the ESPIDF SDK. After installation, the directory should look something like as shown in this slide. After I installed the first version, I discovered that I needed to update to a later version. And so you can see here the subdirectory that uh, in which the later version is installed. Also, it is important to add to uh, the profile file uh, the path statements as shown. The next thing that needs to be done is to clone PCB Reflux's Espressif package, since a good portion of the gateway code is based on his example. After installation, navigate to the GAT server MQTT gateway build directory. Build this project first and then use it to understand how it can be changed so that the device uh, is a client rather than a server. To build projects using the SDK, please refer to the documentation. Um, building is just a matter of using make to configure, build, flash, and monitor the device. Here are the project source files. Source files are always found under the main subdirectory. Understand this particular code and program flow. Get it running and communicating with a broker of your choice. As mentioned earlier, this project is reused to create the GET client version. Essentially, gateway main.c, gatsprofile.c, and gatsprofile.h are replaced with uh, client code. Build the get client and server examples. These are found under the examples slash Bluetooth subdirectory. Building both and getting them working together allows one to understand program flow and operation of BLE protocol, and thus one is in a position to 
at what's required to do voltage measuring and to do uh, client polling. In the server, voltage measurement is done by adding a task and using the analog to digital converter. In the client, polling is done also in a task, but this task will run continuously. Once the server peripheral is working, a sensor such as the gas sensor in this example can be added since the code is complete at this point. Here are how the server and client source files look in their respective directories after adding the required code. The server now measures and sends voltage, and the client now pulls and receives the voltage value. The client and server are working together. A final project directory is created. Copy PCB flux refluxes project, excluding the files mentioned earlier, into uh, this directory. Add then the client files from the get client project. At this point, gatcdemo.c is modified to add Wi-Fi and MQTT to finish the gateway. Before we test and show working results, I'm going to step through both GAT server and GAT client code snippets and show you the items that are either modified and or added. When the server receives a read request, a GATS read event is triggered. At this point, a task is created to read the ADC. In creating the task, the address of the voltage to be updated is passed. Before the GAT server can send the response, we take note of the fact that a GATS response contains a matrix of values which are only bytes. Therefore, the voltage value, which is a 32-bit integer, needs to be encoded as 4 bytes. To finish up with the server, the ADC task code is adapted from the example shown here under the examples directory. Importantly, the address of the voltage is passed to the task. The ADC value is averaged over 64 samples, and then the tax exits. Now we move to the get client code and gateway. Here we will find many more modifications and additions than in the case for the server. In gatcdemo.c, we straightforwardly add the Wi-Fi code. Additionally, we add a function called start scan. This function is called after server disconnect and will scan for a server for 30 seconds before exiting. We continue in GATC demo.c and we focus our attention to the GATC profile event handler. When the server sends a response in the, this client, the read characteristic event is triggered. The 32-bit voltage value is reconstructed as shown and then combined into a message which is sent on to the MQTT task. At this point, we turn our attention to where the polling task gets created. After connecting to the server, the client program flow proceeds until the client writes its characteristic data to the server. Upon a successful write, what is triggered is a GATC write characteristic event. At this point, the polling task is created, which then runs continuously so long as the server is connected. The code below shows this. Take particular note at the bottom of the slide where the address of the get client profile instance is asked to the polling task. To finish up with modifications, 
and additions to Gatsy demo.c, we need to deal with a disconnect event, that is when the server disconnects from the client. When the server disconnects, the client receives a disconnect event. At this point, a task notify is written on the handle of the polling task, which in turn tells the polling task to delete itself. Then a start scan is initiated whereby for 30 seconds the client attempts to connect to a server. Finally, we need to look at the code in the poll task itself. At the beginning, a type define of a Gatsy profile instance needs to be specified so that when the task is initiated and to it is passed the address of the Gatsy profile instance, it knows what it is. The other item to look at in polltask.c is the while loop itself. At the beginning of each loop, a task notify take is executed to see if a notify has been written to it. If UL events to process is greater than zero, then this is the method by which we tell the task to terminate, at which point it will delete itself. If polling continues, then a send read request is sent to the server by executing a read characteristic using the profile that has been passed to it at the initiation of the polling task. This completes discussion of the code and we now move on to discuss somewhat about the hardware and then finally some testing. This is the device that is used for both the client and the server. As mentioned before, the system on module is the ESP WRROOM32 that incorporates the ESP32 system on chip. The essential features of the PCB are simple and straightforward. A 5 to 3 volt regulator, a reset button, removable jumper for flashing, pin header for the UART, and some GPIO made available. Finally, there is a USB mail plug. The PCB itself was designed so that it fit the footprint of the Adafruit Feather Huzza. Therefore, files for 3D printing of enclosure and cover can be found at Thingiverse for this particular device. For the sensor that attaches to the server, an MQ-135 gas sensor was used and adapted to plug into a board which in turn plugs into the pin header on the server PCB. 5 volts for the sensor drive from the server PCB. Now for some testing. Here the server is plugged into a wall charger, turns on, and sits there waiting for a client to connect to it. NRF Connect, running on an Android phone, shows the server sitting there waiting for a connection. After connecting, we see the following on the phone. Note that there are two services. Recall that the GET server demo uh, had two services, but we are using only one. After a read command is sent, we see that four bytes are returned, F2010000, Converting these to the 32-bit number results in a value of 498. So we're getting a return of 498 millivolts from the gas sensor. Now for the big test. We first power up the server with its gas sensor. 
Then we boot up the client gateway, which in turn will connect with the server and sensor. Now we'll go and look at what messages are being sent to the broker as well as looking at messages being received separately by a subscriber. Let's begin by monitoring the client gateway. Here we see it periodically making read requests, obtaining the voltage value, connecting to the cloud broker, and sending data using TLS security. As it continues on, let's examine the disconnect event when the server disconnects. Here shows the disconnect event being received. Scanning for another 30 seconds begins and the polling task exits. Scanning continues on for 30 seconds and finally the device terminates scanning and subsequently needs to be rebooted. And now for the grand finale. Here we're connected to the cloud broker. Messages are being uploaded to it by the gateway. And now any subscriber can also receive the same messages. Here we have my Jetson TX1 running Mosquito Subscriber and the same data is being received. This concludes my presentation. I hope others will find it useful in how to make a complete application end-to-end. -end. Bluetooth Low Energy where a central device grabs data from a peripheral and sends it to the cloud where it can be stored, processed, or observed in real time by any subscriber. Thank you for watching.